The Book of Recollections, Episode 17, Under the Radar, by Dysylvania. Didn't we end with a plot twist last time? Well, if you haven't gotten used to it by now, you're just in the right place, because this story has more curves than a sinusoid. Anyway, can't wait to hear more about how Shaq double-crossed the gang again, or what does the legend have to do with Kate and the rest of the folks that came through the Tomb of Time? Until then, today's recollection is taking a different path, haha! <laughs> Adam, Kate, Isari, and Tolrock had found shelter in a nearby mountain, calling the Dam Cave a safe haven from the events that had transpired earlier at Gogmagog Prison. Wounded and exhausted, they decided to enjoy some well-earned rest, gather their strength and then try to find their way back to Greenspring and alert Pax about the Queen. But Isari, being finally able to process her newfound appearance, kept tossing and turning, unable to sleep. She felt something calling to her from outside the cave, so she followed whatever was beckoning her into the night and up towards the sky. She gave into the enticing call and rose from the ground, trying to fly as high as she could, fully embracing her ascension. By the time the sun showed its first rays, Isari had returned to the camp, while trying to make a beverage native to the Redlands known as coffee. Right before the others could wake up, she discovered her hands would simply pass through any source of object and would even make it catch fire, as it also happened with the kettle, which she frustratingly abandoned. Adam was the first to wake up and perform his morning rituals, where he drew two cards, the key and the moon, which had yet to reveal their true meaning. His concentration was swiftly cut off by Kate, who somehow saw Adam responsible for her hunger and in charge of providing nourishment. After the unsuccessful attempt, Kate turned towards a groggy Tulrock and persuaded him into hunting for something to eat. It was slim pickings for the group, having only moss, lichens and some funny-looking mushrooms to feast upon. Naturally, Adam was cautious around the fungi, but Kate and Tulrock had already eaten a few before actually heeding young Hebdom's words. Surprisingly, nothing happened. Not yet, at least. Tulrock remembered he was in possession of a map that should lead them straight to the Greenspring city gates, so the group packed up their gear and headed off on what they assumed it was the correct path. I do hope Tulrock wasn't holding the map upside down, he was barely able to read it, even with Adam helping. Suddenly, they heard a swoosh above the tree line, something moving rapidly, barely visible to the untrained eye, but Adam and Kate, seeing Pax in action, recognized them as being messages, sent in the form of a letter. Isari swiftly flew in the air and tried to catch one of them without burning it completely. Singed on one side, the letter was still readable, conveying a message to the queen herself informing her about Adam and his girlfriend escaping Gogmagog prison along with Isari. Oh, Kate didn't like that, not one bit. Because the group realized it would be even more difficult to enter Greenspring undetected, they started to frantically plan their next moves. Only Tolrock would be able to pass the city gates without any suspicion, since he already possessed a mark of acceptance, given to him by the priest of his village. Adam put his magical skills to use and managed to help Isari with an appearance that would draw far less attention once inside the city, dimming her glow. Apparently, Sari wasn't the only glowing thing around. Remember those mushrooms Kate and Tolrock ate? I think they just got the perfect chance to test their color knowledge. Don't worry, <laughs> they were harmless, it's all about peace and love, man. As dawn was setting in and the adventurers pressed on, Kate could sense that she was being watched. She somehow expected it, seeing that only one astral was left to visit her, so she held her guard up. But noticing the timid and childlike demeanor of Lunai, Kate quickly shifted towards a gentle approach, in a way to make the astral feel more at ease. However, the half-elf once again asked 
for some time to ponder her answer before pledging her fate to Lunai or one of her siblings, feeling even more conflicted after that last encounter concluded. In spite of the occasional flying griffins and a creature resembling the manticore that was wreaking havoc at Gog Magog prison, Trouble did not seem to follow the party of four. They journeyed for three uneventful days, until they reached the Sabbath River at the dawn of the third day. After Isari held back her curiosity of testing the water's deadly capacity, the group decided that following the river upstream would eventually lead them back to the city. A storyteller appeared in their line of sight, beckoning them to cross the river and join him on the other bank. Isari was the only one that had the means of getting to the other side unharmed by the river, a feat that was congratulated by the storyteller and even rewarded with a pair of gloves that restored Isari's ability to interact with objects as long as she was wearing them. They bid the storyteller farewell and found a safe space where they could camp for the night and during Kate and Tolrock's watch, they suddenly heard the sound of flapping wings and soon enough a gorgeous pegasus emerged from the dark sky above. Kate immediately recognized Monkey's flamboyant demeanor and Blaze's bookworm shyness but was slightly confused at the trench coat that seemed to float on its own. The invisible man in the coat introduced himself as Dave and they all decided to stick together and travel towards the city that was only one day's worth of travel away. Now, who would you pick? The effervescent monkey? Or the quiet but bookish blaze? It seems that Kate has already made up her mind on that one. They even set a date. Ooh. And what's a book without a touch of romance? <laughs> right? While on their way to Greenspring, Adam decided to send Pax a message to his owl, Halria, to ensure his support in entering the city unnoticed. The scene switched when exasperated Pax was in the middle of a more intimate situation with Grace. Ooh. The romantic moment was cut short by the arrival of Adam's owl who continuously scraped at the window until it was allowed inside. Pax begrudgingly replied to the group that they were to meet him at the Purple Road, not before inserting a few snarky comments for good measure. After reuniting with the group, Pax made acquaintance with Isari and they both delved into the mission that brought her all the way from the Red Kingdom to the Green Kingdom hoping to stop the imminent war between the two realms. Pax offered his assurance to Isari and urged her to return to her people with a promise of support. But because Isari was not allowed to return empty-handed, Pax quickly fashioned an official letter that would document their discussion and future promises, no matter who the new ruler of Greenspring would be once the trials concluded. After a bittersweet farewell to Isari, the group decided to split into three. Monkey and the gang would find their own way into the city, Grace would accompany Tolrock who already had the mark of acceptance handy, and Pax would guide Adam and Kate on Humanest straight to the Chancellor's Manor, where they would reconvene with the rest. The group took their time to enjoy the lavish abode of Leo who kindly placed it at their disposal while he was in Nocturna Obscura. Kate started getting ready for her evening date with Blaze, while Adam prepared Tolrock to enroll in the Solis District School of Magic where Professor Elara, who had previously taught Adam, would be in charge of his education. Kate put on the only opulent golden dress she owned and persuaded Humaness to offer her a ride to the Ember Leaf, a nice little tea place in the Purple District, where Blaze was waiting for her on the terrace holding a flower. Upon seeing Kate, he got so flustered that he lit up the flower, leaving nothing but ashes. But the mood was set, the air was calming and the two stepped into a cozy bubble of their own until Kate caught a glimpse of her two ravens and something next to her that left her in shock. Day 
This was the recap for episode 17 of Vim, as told by the Book of Recollections. I was Karina Georgescu, your Vim recap narrator. If you'd like to join us as Vim, the Tale of Immortality premieres, tune in on Sunday at 5 p.m. UTC on youtube.com slash at Dysylvania. New recaps drop every Friday evening. And remember, every subscribe keeps the magic alive. Thank you for sticking with us. Good day, good night, and don't let the vampires bite. Blah, blah, blah.